You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Excited to check out Hex Mods from uh, Hex Bugs. And thanks to Hex Bugs for sending this to me to check out on video. And I had to refresh my memory because I had an advanced Hex Mods intro that they had sent me with a Hex Mods special box that you can only get 25 plays. And I recorded that. So let me show you that real quick, and then I'll come right back. Next in the show is a line of RC tuner cars we're calling Bug Cars. No, no, Tyler. They're called Hex Mods. What? Hex Mods. Really? Oh, that's way cooler. Hex Mods. These bad boys are fully customizable RC cars that bring hobby-grade RC to retail. Did somebody say dang? Just kidding. That was me just now the cars have swappable body styles hey can we do that thing where we break apart the oh yeah that's hot hex mods have swappable parts to modify the car's look and performance we've caught these babies at over 30 feet per second that's 20 miles an hour you know what goes faster than that nothing what you can swap out the motor to improve speed and torque the tires for drifting or stronger grip and even alternate between two-wheeled and four-wheel drive we may be a toy company but we don't play Customize the look of your hex mod with a variety of graphics and decals, as well as various body panels, including spoilers, side skirts, hoods, and bumpers. Spoiler alert, we're about to get lit. You can even customize the lights, from colored underglow to working tail and headlights. Told you about the lit thing. Both medium and large sets come with swappable parts, a rechargeable LiPo battery, a variety of decals, and so much more. So how do you drive it? With style. Each set comes with a 2.4 gigahertz RC controller, so you can drift and drive these hex mods from over 100 feet away. So you'll be driving it all the way to the next video. All right, so that was pretty cool back then to make that introduction, uh, but I never did get a hex mods until now. So thanks again, Hexbug. This is a 30 plus piece kit it is a 2.4 gigahertz remote control in the Pro Series Elite. It is the yellow one. There are other colors. We'll probably see more about it on the back of the box, but you get little tools with it. You can change to drift tires. There's a controller. There's different decals. Let me flip it around. I think I saw a little charger unit in there as well. Okay, so there is a lot going on. There is a red one, it looks like, in the top right corner. Do you see that? Pro Series Elite Raceway, customizable RC cars, ride in style. So there's a rear bumper, there's a rear bracket, car body, front hood, everything that's inside is listed on the right. And there's the speed, there is the controller, and how it works. Accelerate your vehicle by pulling the trigger, steer by turning the knob left and right. Modify and upgrade your hex mods gears until it reaches a max speed of about 13 miles per hour. Tweak your drive, recharge and go. Performance to style, all kinds of little sections here. At the top though, it says, modify and upgrade your way to infamy with Hexmod's RC tuner cars. For the first time, you have been granted the power with this fully customizable RC tuner car set. With the many optional parts provided, your mod's look and overall performance is in your hands. To begin, determine and define your personal style by switching out rims, installing underglow lighting, and applying your favorite decals. Then, upgrade your mod's performance by changing tires, increasing suspension, and changing your gearing to ensure your hex mod's performance cannot be beat. Become the hottest rod on the street with hex mod's RC tuner cards. Let the instant customization begin. All right. Ride in style. Ride in style with the spoiler options offered in the Pro Series Elite. Perfect your hex mod style to be the hottest rod on the street. And then performance of style. Pro Series Elite offers an endless possibility of customizations with over 18 modifications available with the various options including in this hex mod set. Explore hundreds of different and mod combinations. Customize everything from the physical appearance to the overall performance of your vehicle and you discover your perfect mod. All right. I think that's enough of me talking like a commercial. Let me get into the box here. Let's check out 
What's inside the box? Okay, let's get into the box. This looks uh, somewhat simple. There's a piece of tape on this edge. Looks pretty cool. I mean, you got all the neat little engine gearing system here. You got the rear end, an underglow you can put on, a differential. So that's uh, it's pretty. I love RC in general, but I also love building things on video. Sometimes too much because I spend too much time building and showing you all the pieces and not as much time actually playing with the item. Okay, there we go. In the back is tucked in the little instruction booklet. It's the Falcon. See, I was wondering if they had a name for it. I don't remember seeing that on the front of the box, but I have the Falcon. Oh boy, look at all this. Okay, let's not get overwhelmed. Let us take a little look. Okay, so they include some batteries nicely tucked in there. Let's get those out. Okay, three batteries. And then everything in here looks like you can just take it out. So let's see, this is the charger. Well, okay, so that just pulls out. Okay, this is the controller. There you go, simple enough. Pretty neat, slick design. You got that little, almost like a aluminum accent there, and there's all the buttons on the top. The only thing about anything, that might be the trim, I don't know. And the vehicle, the vehicle. Okay, so it's like a plastic body, all plastic. And now the actual car. I think I could do this without actually uh, losing those little plastic bands. I always find them to be helpful when I'm trying to store everything back in, but something's gonna give here. Okay, these two are going to be cut. This one's tucked way in there. And then this one here, okay, there we go. It's got some weight to it. So it's uh, definitely got a heavy feel to it. And then these little tires. Okay, we could save this if we really wanted to. They're just, the cardboard is like taped down there. These little tools that I use are not very sharp, so. I think. Okay, so the drifting wheels are like a hard plastic. All right, and here's the decal sheet right in front. That just sits on there. How much am I gonna do with that? I don't know. Okay, this is nice. Everything will just pull right out. Here is the alternative hood. Okay. The spoilers. Spoiler alert. Okay, so those are taped on the back. So that's gonna require me to do this. That just helps it, I guess, in the shipping department. Oh, that broke anyway. Okay, spoilers. All right. And then this pack. This pack of stuff. Okay, taped in the back again. Very nice. That's all I need to do is lift the one tab out. And there's my little tray of stuff. Okay, all I have to do is lift both tabs out, and that's it. Same with the wheelios. What's the dealio with the wheelio? Oh, that was a total fail. That, that knife was so dull, it wouldn't even cut the tape, but it ripped the paper from the cardboard. Okay. I think we got it all. Everything is now out. I can go with that. Let's get the wheelios out. I don't know, what is the dealio with the wheelio? I got that tape all over it. And then another like, uh, like a plastic coating. It's almost like a peel from a, like a package, like a Lunchables or something. You just peel it open and there you have your new Rimeos. Okay, rims, tires, there we 
go, over there. You all sit over there really nice and cozy. Very good. And this, and then some springs. Now what I'm not seeing is any kind of extra screw, so I'm wondering if they are, they just clip in and out like the body parts. Here is some springs. I right, watch, you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna rip it and it's gonna shoot across the room and then I'm in serious trouble. All right, there we go, batteries out of the pack. So is the car rechargeable and the batteries not? What I'm seeing here, there's some kind of connection point here to this, but it's definitely not this kind of connection. And then, okay, so there's tiny screws holding the wing on, and it looks like it's also holding the hood piece on, okay? All right, what do we do? Well, four. Transmitter and battery install. Okay, so let's uh, let's let me just do that. Let me move everything out of the way. We'll come back. We'll just go step by step and methodically work through this and make sure I have everything just right. Okay, so they take you through the whole controller first, way before they even take you to uh, adjusting your vehicle. Okay, so there's another port on the top. Oh, right here. Okay, see this one here? I'm jumping the gun already. That goes in there. So let me do that. Let me get that charge in, I think. Okay, light is on if it is charging. When light is off, it has finished charging. One hour charge time, 20 minute play time. You can plug into a USB port or wall adapter. Use only supplied USB cable. So let us see. Let me get this charging while I work on that. And it'll give us plenty of time to uh, have it ready. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm in the opposite video booth just to do a quick hookup here. Now, oddly, they show the charging right next to the engine underneath where it plugs in. So we'll see. I don't see anything there that would say indication. So maybe it's a really thin part of the plastic. I don't know. Let's plug it in. And right now, I don't know where it's showing charging. Oh, I see. It's right there on the top. Can you see it in there? I mean, it is tiny. And right now, it is red. It's probably going to go out of focus. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I'll let that charge. What I'll do is I'll set my timer so I know how long it's been. And then let's move back now and uh, learn more about that controller. All right. So let's get the little screwdriver out. What I probably should do is take this little tray here and move my pieces to there. It's less volatile if something does drop. Okay, that one's taped in, so that'll be good. That's over there. Now they want you to take this with your mini-me screwdriver. Yeah, I think the charging part should have been step one. Start your charge so you're ready to play. All right, so they show, I can't even, can't even make it out. Okay, well, there's one spring that way. And then the other springs are this, oh, sorry, this way. Okay, that all hits the springs, that pushes in. Lock it down, and then it's got, it's got pressure on it. You see, my thumb is stressing out. Okay, something's lighting up. That's a good sign. Okay, so it's trying to pair. Let's see. Okay, so let's learn here. One, LED indicator. Okay. Two, power button. It's off now. Three, left steering trim, right steering trim, high and low speed, okay. Five is, uh, that's five. Six, steering wheel sensitivity, okay, so that's steering wheel sensitivity. And then the steering wheel, okay, throttle, and battery door. Power on the controller. If the controller LED is blinking quickly, make sure the wheel and trigger are centered. 
Well, how's that? I mean, they show a picture there. How am I supposed to know that's centered? Huh? I guess if, if I'm holding it like that, but isn't it always centered? I don't know. And then look at the bottom of the car. There's an on-off switch. And once the controller LED starts blinking slowly, flip car over and press the power button on the car for two seconds. The controller LED turns solid red when it is paired with the car. All right, we got to get to that. And then steering and trim. All right, so left forward. Okay, right down. Low speed. High, so you can change that, remember? It's like a little indicator on there, so you will see. We did that. Now it's how to use the tool. It's how to use a screwdriver. Hmm. Put it there. Tighten. Loosen. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosen. And then the back of this is for the wheels. That's so like a little hex. Six star, one, two, three, four, five point. Okay, now charging, which we did. Now how to install the body. Now we're going to bypass that. We're going to trick our body out right now. Okay, did I miss these? These lights? Hmm, okay, maybe I missed those in the pack. Let me go back and look. Oh, and I knocked everything over, see? How beneficial it was to have that? Okay, so I need to find the luminators, wheel and tire replacement, okay. All that is sitting, I wanna work on the body. Replace front suspension, we don't need to do that. You could change the gears, swap out those gears like they said. The gears on the motor will swap out. And then you put it all back together. Where's the body? Oh, here we go. Install the decals. Okay, changing out the hood. Let's just do that so we can do something and learn about these two steps. So let me get set for that. Didn't even see them sitting there, see? You think, oh, you should have caught that. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. I said a thousand times, it's always obvious to the person that sees the obvious, right? Okay. All right. Back to where I was. All right. So there's also, oh, this is like a rubbery material, which is good. This won't, shouldn't break off. So they show you doing this, then this. Those are mini, mini, mini screws. Those would be easy to lose. Okay. This one a little bit more. No, it's hard to see what I'm doing in there, but there are mini screws there. Let me just pop this in. We're going all with the black accents, and this one has got... It in, no. It does go through, but it goes through to the outside, the airflow. I guess some may go in the engine, but... Interesting. Okay, now just put that back in. Oh, I'm tricking out my car. Why do you not want to screw in easily? It could just be because it's the first time it's come off the car, so. There you go. Well, that one went in a lot better. This one, a little weak. There we go. I felt that one. Okay, good. I know that's what the hood looks like. I like that better. Now let's change this uh, back piece. It's just the two screws back here. There's three options for this. I really like the black, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm not sure I'm. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's just a little bit different back scoop. It's got a little lip on it to follow this lip here. It's the only difference between the two yellows. I'm not sure if it's gonna come all the way out. I think it's they gotta come all the way out. 
Let us see. Oh, you got to take off this black bumper piece too. Okay. They didn't say that. Oh, they did say it. I didn't notice that. I did just now notice that. These actually take a little pressure. Probably because they have not been removed. They probably could have made that so you didn't have to take this off at the same time. At least that's the way I see it. I almost want to get my own screwdrivers because these are so small on your, your thumbs. Looks like it's all coming apart. We're losing it. Okay. Ooh, I could do it without. Will it squeeze out? No, a little bit more. practically all the way out. There we go. Let's just pop this one in. It's going to go this way. Oh, it's all the way out. Okay. Let's just finish it. Okay, there we go. And then this goes over this like this. There. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. See how far that screw went, found its way all the way through? It, 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 it just seems to always happen when you're working with little parts like this. You, you drop something and it ends up halfway across the room by the time you find it. You almost need a tweezers. Okay, if you have a hard time handling little screws and parts... Get someone to help you with this. I just want to get it started. Right, twisting it. Okay, that one started. Okay, good. Maybe if I just put the pressure down this way. Plus two, if you're holding it to try to show everybody on camera, it's gonna be a different different way than if you're just like doing it on your desk in your lap or something like that. I'll make the little sounds. <laughs> like I'm in a real shop. <laughs> How cool is that? Okay, my... I was going to say my... The rear of the car looks great. I wanted to say the rear end. I'm not going to say that. Oh, I just said that. The rear of the car looks cool. Look at that. I like that. There's your... Your dually tip exhaust coming out of the back. Okay, that is raring to go. All right, let's take a look at, we're not gonna use the rest of these now, so let's move on to the decals. Okay, so that took about 13 minutes to charge. It's already charged. Where are your decals? I mean, you're going to t completely take the gearing out and replace the, the guts. I'll do some of that with you, but I do... I'm stressing maybe trying to play more than actual 
Okay, so you have sticker numbers, and then it looks like two sets. So you have A1, A1. No, actually, this, this A1 sticker is this A1 sticker. There's only one A1 decal. Yeah, I didn't miss. I didn't miss. I don't know why they're repeating everything twice. You with well, A11 is down here, and then A11 is up there. Did I miss something? Let me look at the box again. Hold on a second. That had all the stickers. Yeah, one sticker sheet. That's all it shows on the box. And none of the pictures of the car on the box show up with the stickers. All right. Great help. Let's just, let's just proceed. I almost like it without any decals on, but at this point, I'm in now. No turning back. It's how I want to approach this is the, uh, I want to approach this delicately and carefully. Okay, cool. All right. A2 is on the nose. Okay, I don't want to put it on there because that would go better on the flat hood. Okay, it's not for the one with the ridges on it. A3, A3, where are you? A3 is the side. Is it this way? Yes, I think so. If it's in this little channel area. Okay. And then A4 fits on that side. Okay. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And then A8, oh, A5. A5 is on the back, but we just changed that, so we're leaving that. A, and it's this cool little uh, vulture eagle looking creature. There's a decal up here, which is A10. How is A10 going to fit on there? A8. They're showing right on the center of the top of the car. Hex mods. Like this. Okay. What's these? What's what's A7? A6, A7. A7 looks like it runs along the side. Car this way. A7. Maybe along the wheel, like this? Yeah, I think so. so. That means A8 is gonna go the opposite. Okay, that's cool. I do like the bird though. And the flames, A10, where'd the flames go? They show the flames here, maybe. They have the car like this. They have A10 going down this side. They don't show the direction, but let's just say like that. That's where I'm putting it. Okay, if it's wrong, it's wrong. You know, you decorate the car. It's your modification. It's how you want it to look. That's how you do it. Okay, and then there's just a few more. That one I wasn't going to use. That one I can't use. What is A6? No, A6, they show the car this way, and it's right here, A6.
Okay, there you go. All right. Now, let's start looking at the chassis and all the stuff that can happen with this. Well, you know, of course I'm going with the lights. The booklet shows the, uh, just screwing them into the sides. They clip in, there's like little pins there. You just pin them in and then, where's my mini me screwdriver? My super tiny mini me screwdriver. Must clip down a little more. Okay, maybe not. Let me take that screw out. It almost seems like the screws are infringing, so you do, you probably do have to keep tightening it. Interesting. There it's going down. Okay, so it's, it's taking a degree of finger strength to do this with this miniature screwdriver. I have a whole collection of mini screwdrivers and stuff. That didn't go on as easy as I thought it should have. Because you can't push it because the screws are directing it down. I could test them. Yeah. I'm not putting a lot of finger strength. Because you basically just that that tip of the fingers where you gotta really crank it in there. Okay, let's hope that's right. Alright, let's check out taking off the wheels next. Okay, so noticing now these are the little wheel locks or the wheel nuts that are holding on the wheels. I think I'm just going to put the drifting wheels on the back. So I like the hubs though, or the rims, better on, uh, that are on the car. But let's just get a wheel off so we can get that experience there. Okay, so I'm gonna take the rubber off the back. I'm just gonna put the drifters on the on the rear. Those will be difficult to get off. I'm telling you, they, that took a little another taking some hand pressure here, everybody. This is delicate work. Okay, so really, I don't need to take that off. I just need to push this on. Oh, that doesn't go on easily. Remember what I said? Or are these rims just for this rim? These tires just for this one? No, that goes on pretty tight too. Oh, yeah, I don't trust that. Yeah, take it off the car. Don't try to do that on the vehicle. Okay. There we go. That aspect. All right, let me look at the next few steps, clear all this out of here, and then I'll try something else. All right, next would be replacing the front or rear suspension. So it looks as though they have the car this way. You take the top two screws off, the bottom two screws off, and then you can replace the springs. Do we want to go through that, or do we want to drive the car? I want to drive the car, but let's just look at it. And this goes for the rear end, too, of the car. So what I'm guessing is the spring, the springs have a little more spring in their step, you know? 
So it's either a stiffer, we'll see. We'll look at the springs and we'll be able to determine that. Now these are a little bit different kind of screw here. They're even smaller. That's just to take this yellow piece off. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost ready to just zoom across the area here. I guess you got to take them all the way up. Well, I think a tweezers is in order here. Small snubby nose pliers. of a screw I don't know it seems like it's all the way up yeah I gotta get a tweezers hold on a second okay see there you go okay I see so these are a smaller spring and they have these have more compression, okay? So if you want a stiffer suspension, you would go with those. Front and back. Oh, did you get a good look inside there? So you got the two little shocks up here and they're putting the pressure. So when the wheels up or down, it's like, that's putting pressure down, okay? next well let me do this let me look at how to get into the engine that would be the next step and I think we've checked every modification potentially that's available to us Cool looking car. These should be easier to get into now. Yeah, I say that and then, you know, sometimes you just kind of take this like this, grip it real tight. again lesson learned sometimes though when you're gripping it with the tweezers like this that's when they shoot across the room at high velocity and then you're looking for the tiniest of screws but that worked all right let me look at the booklet now let's see what it takes to get the engine out okay i'm happy with that all right, so this next group of steps looks pretty intense. You're going to lift this out. You're going to take that. You're going to pull the engine. So just make sure it's not hot. Then take off the two screws on this side and the two screws on the back side. And that's going to let you lift the front out so that you can switch to this orange gear. Now, the orange gear looks like it has more teeth. More teeth or less teeth? It's hard to tell. But look, the top gear is a bigger gear so you might get more gear a better gear ratio there is what they're talking about but if you just pop this here and then this piece they show here becomes a tool to pop the gear out okay and then they show you how to align the gears 
how to push it back in, how to do all that, and then put it all back together, put the motor back in. Now you've got the orange gears, and then that is changing the front, changing the suspension we did, putting it all back together. All right, simple enough, huh? Yeah, it's simple enough. But it looks like the engine just pops out. There. That's it. So what's making the contact to the motor is those springs. So the power's going to those plates. They look copper or brass. I don't know. Maybe cop copper. And they go to here. And then they put the power up into the top of the engine. And then this just clips back in. I like that. Okay. Let's get the car paired. Yeah, it's got to be copper, right? Okay, so that's all the extra pieces. You got two extra hubs there. You got your four gear pieces. The only thing I don't know about is that little white pinion piece. It might just be a backup piece because it looks like something that you can use. Now, putting the body on the car or the car in the body. That clips in there, simple enough. Flip that back. And now we have a car which is ready to run. So let me clear the tabletop. And let's get ready to race. Okay, so, what, oh, by the way, just in case someone picks up this car later in life and you don't have the instructions, I am going to flip through this. You know, think about it. Ten years from now, someone finds one of these in, like, a thrift store or something. You just never know. Or a garage sale. And there's no booklet. Okay. There's a lot there that they need to learn. There's so many games and items that I have with no instructions. I wish I had just a quick copy of it. So that's why I'm doing this now. Sorry, everybody. One more page. One more page. That's all you need to know. See all that? There, last page. Okay, pairing the controller. Turn the controller on. Okay, that's flashing. Once the control starts blinking, flip over car and press the power button on the car for two seconds. One, two. Okay. It's paired. All right. Okay, so it's got posi traction, but if you hold this wheel, the one other one spins, you hold this wheel, the other one spins a little slower, but the lights work. Oh, it's stuck on my tabletop. I'm trying to reverse. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some stuff with the trim here. Stuck on the back again. All right, I tell you, let me enlarge our surface area because it looks like I can play with it right in here with those uh, wheels on. Let's check it out. Okay, that's a pretty big surface area. Here we go. Almost fell off my tabletop. I like the, the sound of it. It's got some some uh, energy to it. You know, it sounds like power. It whipped around really fast with the drift tires. I'm just kind of getting used to the controls now. Okay, so the trim is a little off. I'll show you what I mean. Let me set the car straight here and just try to drive straight. I don't know, it's not off. Maybe I just was turning the wheel, I don't know. It sometimes has a hard time with picking up the reverse. Oh, it's stuck on my tabletop. Hold on a second. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, 
on. Let me go. Let me change the speed. Oh. It's definitely got some good speed. It just sometimes, I don't know if it's not picking up the reverse. No, it's just stuck, but, oh, there we go. All right, got stuck there. Now let me just uh, drive around a little bit more. So basically, this is the amount of steering. So when you turn it this way and turn right, the wheels don't turn as much if I put it all the way, then they turn more. So that's the steering sensitivity. I have it on full power, and then that's your trim, those two, and then the on and off. But right now, let's just see if we can spin around here. Okay, sometimes the reverse, it's still, there we go. Ooh, let me move away from this. There we go. Ooh, almost off the edge. It drifts and does donuts really nice. Now that gets stuck on the little lip there on my tabletop. Obviously, I'm not a good drifter. Let me do this. Let me switch the wheels to the softer wheels. Okay, here we go. Now I put the better tires on. It still slips a little bit on this tabletop, but you can tell that just by doing that. Backwards, forwards, backwards. It's got some really good speed to it. Backwards. Come on, come on. Almost too good. I'm going to just go real slow. Okay. So the turning radius is just, it's too wide for my backdrop. Okay, I had to grab it. So let me just see if I can make this turn. I'll bring here and make a left turn. Let's see if it'll do the radius. Going slow. So you definitely need more room than what this is. This is about maybe two and a half feet, three feet deep. Almost off the table. Ooh, that was cool. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me, uh... I almost like the slicks better. It's easier for me to play up here. All right, that's a quick fix, so let me do that. Then I want to take the body off, turn the lights off, and let's look at that motor spinning. All right, so now we're close up. That is really cool. Now let's take a look at this engine spinning here. Hopefully it stays in, but I'll just hold it right there. Yeah, now these must be copper, but it has a brass color look to it. I was trying to take a look at that earlier. It's lighter than what a copper would be for the conductor there. Not really sure. I don't think uh, brass is a conductor anyway. But we're not talking about electricity right now. I not too worried about it. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Ooh, yeah, broke away from the engine. Okay, so it doesn't like being unclipped. It's got enough power to kick itself out. Okay, simple enough. It's really cool when it does its uh, drifting 360. Okay, so here's what I'm saying about the wheel now. Okay, see that turn? Let's see if there's... Position two, position one. See, a lot less. Then you go back up and you get the full turn.
All right, let's just see how bright these are with the lights off now. One more test. Okay, so there you are. Camera's still focusing, hard to believe. It usually has a hard time in these low light conditions. So I won't spend much time showing you this part, but I just wanted to give you an idea. Let's see if I can get it to drift in a circle, don't it? And I can't. There, see, camera went out. Right there. Ooh, almost off the tabletop again. All right, let me bring it back with some light, get the body back on it, and I will uh, wrap it up with you. All right, I am back. I thought I'd give you a different perspective. Ooh, there's a little thing on the floor over there. Let's go investigate. See that? It's a very clean floor otherwise. All right, so I also put the grippy wheels on them and I cleaned them off because they were a little dusty. So it runs pretty good here. It's got good speed. I'm not even pulling the trigger all the way. Here's all the way. Well, this would be cool with two or three running. Okay, so the wheels are losing a little grip. Probably because of the, uh, the floor being a little dusty. It's pretty clean, but, you know, there's stuff sometimes. Yep, wheels are getting dusty. Ooh, almost knocked over my camera completely. That was bad. So overall, I'm very impressed with how it works. I've done other RC vehicles, so that's something I really enjoy, and I'm glad it works as well as it does. Losing some of its gripping power. All right, so there you go. I think I've showed everything I can. I want to say thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it for you. See you later. I might just drive a little bit more. It's slipping. Oh, all right, later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah, please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.